I do want to bring in Josh Haston, who is the Middle East correspondent for uh, Jewish News Syndicate. And Josh, we appreciate you taking the time to speak with us here on Live Now from Fox. Thanks so much, Stephanie. There is a lot to get to, a lot of breaking news developments out of the Middle East, but I do want to start off with the very latest, which is Egypt's proposal for a two-day ceasefire deal. What can you share with us about this? We haven't heard comments from Israel or Hamas. Yeah, that story just broke a few minutes ago. Uh, let's just remember that Hamas has rejected each and every deal on the table. Israel is doing everything in its power to bring our hostages home actually causing Hamas to release our hostages. That's what this is all about. So Israel has been trying ever since the beginning of the war to have our hostages released. And now you have the president of Egypt making these statements calling for a two-day ceasefire. I have a question. Where has the president of Egypt been until now? Why hasn't he been helping the people in Gaza? Why hasn't the border been open? In any other war, in any other situation across the world, when people are trying to flee the front lines of a war, neighboring countries open their borders. So we have to take al-Sisi's comments with a grain of salt. Uh, that being said, let's remember, Hamas most likely will reject this deal uh, as they reject, rejected every other deal. We don't know now, unfortunately. There are 101 hostages, whether they're alive or whether they're dead. Hopefully most of them are alive, if not all of them are alive. But that being said, uh, we don't know the situation amongst the hostages. We don't know who, who who's holding the hostages right now. Israel took out uh, Sinwar, the head of Hamas in Gaza. So we're not exactly sure what the situation is with the hostages, where they are, who has them, how many are alive. So again, we have to take this with a grain of salt from the president of Egypt. And we were hearing earlier from Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu saying that he would be open to discussions about a ceasefire. But as you mentioned, Hamas has refused uh, to compromise, if at all. Uh, so with this breaking news that really just came down moments ago, uh, from your standpoint, how realistic will it be for both Israel and Hamas to come to sort of some temporary agreement? Well, as you said, the Prime Minister Netanyahu has repeatedly said that Israel is willing to uh, undertake temporary ceasefires. That doesn't mean the end of the war, because Israel's goals have not been met. One of those is, is bringing back the hostages, returning the hostages. Secondly, Hamas has to be disarmed, dismantled entirely. Yes, Israel has taken out a lot of the leadership of Hamas, but you do have pockets of Hamas terrorists who have emerged, especially now in northern Gaza. So until Hamas is no longer a threat to the state of Israel, the war can end. That being said, Israel would be willing to negotiate some sort of temporary, I stress that very, very seriously, temporary ceasefire in order to bring home uh, hostages. If, in fact, it is proven that there are live hostages, please God, hopefully they are, there are live hostages in Gaza. So Israel always willing to negotiate, always willing to talk, Hamas rejecting each and every offer time and time again. And these negotiations, these potential negotiations come as uh, Hezbollah has uh, escalated its attacks. And we actually saw some video of, of some of the missiles. We do know that four Israeli soldiers were, were killed. Uh, we've also seen uh, uh, Iran now retaliate. What can you share with us about the very latest? And will Iran retaliate uh, after those very specific targeted um, missiles by Israel? Yeah, first and foremost, Iran, we have to remember, is the head of the octopus. They are controlling all these terrorist pro uh, proxies throughout the Middle East, Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Houthis in Yemen, Hamas in Gaza. They are all funded and backed by Iran. So over the weekend, Israel, with 100 planes, flew over 1,200 miles to target specific military targets in Iran, uh, dismantling a lot of the air defense system of Iran and targeting their ballistic missile system, their ability to produce drones. So a significant strike by the state of Israel sending a message that we will not tolerate what Iran is doing throughout the Middle East. If you attack us, and Iran has already attacked Israel twice, we had over 200 ballistic missiles fired earlier this month, and in addition to over 400 missiles and drones fired back in April, Israel will not tolerate a situation where Iran will attack the citizens, our residents of the state of Israel. So Israel responding, uh, it was a muted response in the fact that Israel did not attack specific, specifically the nuclear facilities, which Iran is aiming to uh, they are aiming to obtain nuclear weapons in addition to the oil fields. We have to remember at the end of the day, Iran could be an existential threat, could pose an existential threat to the state of Israel if they're able to acquire nuclear weapons. And also very important for your viewers, 
they view Israel, Iran views Israel as the little Satan. They view the United States as the great Satan. So we're talking about not only the safety and security of my country here in Israel, we're talking about the safety and security of America. So that's very, very important, especially now as we head towards elections in the United States. And also, I wanted to ask you about this, Iran demanding that the United Nations Security Council meet after Israel's uh, very focused target against Iran. What would come of that, if anything? That's absolutely comical. Iran, the biggest violator of human rights in the world, the biggest state sponsor of terrorism in the world, trying to approach the UN Security Council. What's even more funny is, per, is perhaps that the United Nations Security Council is actually considering taking on uh, Iran's accusations. I wouldn't be surprised if it actually gets voted on because, you know, as we know, uh, the UN has an, uh, has an automatic majority against the state of Israel. More resolutions in the UN were passed uh, against Israel than every other country combined over the last year. So it wouldn't be surprising. It is comical, but if they could go to the Security Council, I would hope and I would assume that the United States would veto any sort of comical resolution by Iran after their aggression over the past year or since October the 7th against the state of Israel. And, and Josh, there are so many developments. We also have the suspected terrorist attack that happened near a bus stop in, in Tel Aviv. 35 people injured in that. What can you share with us about uh, the state of Israel and the mood there? Uh, security has been heightened for, for so long now, and there are continued attack after attack after attack. Yeah, so that's the dichotomy of living here in the state of Israel. You had a, a truck ramming incident this morning, which an Arab citizen of the state of Israel uh, rammed his truck, from what we know, into about 35 people. One, unfortunately, succumbed to his wounds just several hours ago. Another six in serious condition. That was in the Glilut area, the Glilut Junction, just north of Tel Aviv. So, again, terror has been part of our existence, unfortunately, since... This, the founding of the state of Israel and, and bef way before that, actually, back in the 1900s, 1920s or whatnot. So we understand what terrorism is. That being said, I'm, I'm here in Judea, just south of Jerusalem, and I hear kids playing soccer on the field outside. So that's the, 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 the dichotomy, rather, of what we're dealing with here. In the morning, unfortunately, there's this terrorist attack, a, a truck ramming. Uh, deliberately into a group of people. Remember, Sunday in Israel is a work day, so you have soldiers returning to base, you have people going to work. I understand there was a group of seniors who were out on a tour. They were rammed into uh, by this Arab Israeli, and they're doing investigations now exactly his motives and what exactly the situation is there. But yet, I still have kids outside my window here who are playing soccer. So that's just part of the day-to-day -day life here in the state of Israel. But at the end of the day, we will defeat our enemies. This is a war on seven fronts. Again, Iran, the octopus with its tentacles spread all over the Middle East, and Israel will, main, uh, will be victorious at the end of the day, not only for our sake, but for the sake of all of humanity. Josh, is there anything else that you would like to share with our Live Now from Fox viewers? Yeah, you mentioned a potential Iranian response. It was it was very interesting today. Uh, the IDF actually postponed the induction of its latest uh, group of soldiers today indefinitely. I don't know when that's going to happen, but uh, there was a very uh, great sec uh, security concern for those soldiers who are coming to their bases today. I would think that perhaps that the IDF soldiers who are going to welcome them uh, had to be elsewhere today. So there is a potential of Iran trying to strike here uh, in Israel. And I believe that Israel's strike over the weekend is just the beginning. We targeted specific pinpointed attacks against their military infrastructure. And as I mentioned before, the next step would be to hit their nuclear uh, weapons program because that is an existential threat. So again, this is phase one, I believe. And I think we're gonna see another phase two and a, perhaps a phase three if necessary. When that happens, I don't know. But we are here waiting, anticipating a potential Iranian response. But kids are outside playing soccer, so life goes on. Josh, as always, we do appreciate you taking the time to join us here on Live Now from Fox. Thank you so much.